What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And it's time to get this movie review started. Alright y'all, earlier this week I saw Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is coming to theaters this Friday, November 19th. And let me tell you, what a blast it was to watch. It truly was. This, my friends, is how you do a sequel to a movie 30 years later. Well done. So before I get talking about all the tidbits of the movie, let me give you a little synopsis of what the movie's about. So in Ghostbusters Afterlife, when a single mom and her two kids arrive in a small town, they begin to discover their connection to the original Ghostbusters and their secret le legacy their grandfather left behind. Like I said, Ghostbusters Afterlife was just so enjoyable to watch. Now let me tell you, it was predictable. The movie was totally predictable. But viewers won't care because it truly is a blast to watch. The new film contains some nods from the previous films and Easter eggs that you might want to spot. It's such a nostalgic joy. And the best part about the new film is the fact that creators didn't solely rely on the blast from the past moments, but instead, you know, they cleverly incorporated new elements into the sequel, paving the way for even the possibility of more films to come in the franchise. Won't that be a treat? Now, the film does have such a great cast, but I'm going to tell you, the standout performance for me was in McKenna Grace, who plays Phoebe. She's an awkward science nerd. Of course, she's the granddaughter of the OG Ghostbuster, Egon Spengler. Now, Grace's character development throughout the film was such a pleasure to watch. She, you know, she goes from a socially awkward teen to a competent ghost fighting machine. She not only holds her own when she shares the screen with fellow A-list actors, but she demands the spotlight. And I'm gonna tell you, an added bonus of her character is the dry dad jokes. They will have you cracking up. They will have you in stitches just from the pure silliness of it, the dryness of it, and the unfunniness, I guess you could say. Like I said, she's the granddaughter of Egon, the OG Ghostbuster. And watching the film, I mean, they have many comparisons that she has from her, her grandfather as the movie progresses. You can totally pick up on that. They also have Paul Rudd playing, you know, a seismologist and Phoebe science teacher, Mr. Gruberson. Rudd totally nails his part with ease and, and he totally provides fans with that character element that was originally provided by the great Rick Moranis. Now the choice to make this movie a direct sequel versus another reboot was wise as there doesn't seem to be much here for that diehard fans of the originals films to complain about. With Ivan Rettman producing and his son Jason at the helm directing and co-writing the screenplay the pedigree, I'm telling you, is legit. The two-hour runtime will fly by, even if the first act takes some time to get the ball rolling. And even after the cheesiness and predictability won't anger many, after 30-plus years, it feels so great to know who I'm going to call. See what I did there? So let's talk about what parents need to know before letting their kids watch Ghostbusters Afterlife. As far as language, you're going to get some profanity, but not too harsh of words. You get the S word the a-hole word, and even some phrases like, oh my God, but I say overall, it's not too bad. Another thing that parents need to look out for, of course, is kind of the violence and scary movie. I mean, you have a movie called Ghostbusters, of course you're going to have ghosts in it. And like the original, which a lot of the ghosts were kind of silly and fun, I mean, in this one you get the munchers and the little marshmallow guys running around, you're also going to have some scary ghosts. And... I'm going to tell you, there's a couple of times I jumped out of my scene from the jump scares. You know I hate jump scares. And they had some scary ones jumping out at you with this one. So that might frighten a younger, the younger kid. And the violence, I mean, there was also a death of a grandparent, which we kind of discussed uh, Egon in this. And that might have some moments that really bring out the tears. But also, you know, it could be triggering for some people who might have just lost a, a loved one. Not really nudity to speak of or sex. I mean, there's a kind of an implied sex scene. And there is a phrase like bone her in there. 
But other than that, I mean, it wasn't too bad. This one, I, I think it was have a PG-13 rating. So the, the language, the violence, the scariness, that, that could, that's the big lookout for parents. But overall, I really love Ghostbusters Afterlife. It was such a blast to watch. And, you know, it really does play tribute to the original two films. Great. Like I said, it has nods to the past, maybe even some prize guest appearances, little cameos in there. Coming out this Friday, November 19th, this is one you won't want to miss. Now let me know what you think. If you're excited about it, comments, thumbs on all that. Until next time, mwah!